Welcome into the Inside Scoop. We are live from the On3 studios here in Nashville, Tennessee. And today, it's Sunday, April 7. I'm excited because we have a lot to cover coming off a busy weekend of college football recruiting. So let's start the show. All right, I want to hit on the biggest, the most important topics of the weekend. In this video, we're going to talk about all the recent visits, the rumors, the latest developments, all coming from the recruiting trail. And we're going to start the show with the man himself, on threes, Steve Wiltfong. Actually, this is going to be a staple of the Inside Scoop Sunday show moving forward. We'll have Steve Wiltfong on to talk about all the biggest storylines from the weekend. So let's get to it. Let's bring on my guy, Steve Wiltfong. Steve, how you doing? Welcome to On3, first and foremost. Josh, I'm so excited to be here. This network is growing fast, and I'm excited to be part of the next chapter here at On3. You guys have already put in three years building this thing up, and it's an exciting time to be at On3. Very excited to be on with you right now. I just heard some thunder and lightning outside. We got the totality eclipse coming to my city tomorrow. But before we get into that, very much juiced up to be on the air with you right now. Absolutely. All right. Before the blackout starts, let's get right into it. We got a lot of recruiting to cover. And before the weekend even began, Matt Zowers, the number five quarterback in the on three industry rankings, was off the board. Bit of a shocker. He goes to Mizzou. So we're going to talk a little bit about Missouri later on the show. But right now, we're going to talk some QB dominoes. And what does Matt Zowers, because it was Penn State, Georgia, Mizzou, those were kind of the main players for Zowers. He comes off the board to Mizzou. So what does this mean for Georgia? Well, Georgia offensive coordinator Mike Bobo has been recruiting three quarterbacks very hard in this 2025 cycle. Matt Zollers was obviously one of them, mm -hmm. but you have five-star Julian Lewis out of Carrollton High School there in the Peach State, and then you have Ryan Montgomery from Finlay, Ohio, Finlay High. Those are two guys that George is on the short list for both of them. Julian Lewis currently committed to USC, has been to Georgia several times, including this spring, and he'll be back for his official visit the first weekend in June. Now he might make some more visits this spring. The Colorado spring game has been mentioned. That would be his third visit to Boulder this calendar year. Auburn's in the mix for Julian Lewis. He's really starting to vibe with the new coaching staff at Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, but George has always been in the middle of that one for Julian Lewis. And it oftentimes has been considered the biggest threat to flip him. So we'll continue to monitor that. He just had a fantastic visit to USC. So Lincoln Riley and the Trojans trying to hang on after having him on campus for three days last weekend. And then Ryan Montgomery, uh, visited Georgia earlier this spring. He's also been to campus numerous times. His last visit, he had a chance to sit down and watch film with Mike Bobo and Montgomery Van Gorder for hours and, and really enjoyed that film session. So Georgia's poured a lot into Ryan Montgomery. Montgomery visited Florida this weekend. He's going to be at South Carolina spring game, a decision expected soon after that. Mm -hmm. But does Georgia turn it up now even more for Ryan Montgomery after losing Matt Zollers? We'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, it the Zollers commitment to Mizzou. I mean, if he goes to Georgia, I think that kind of establishes USC as the front runner for Julian Lewis. And I know he's committed there, but I've said publicly on this show, if I had a power ranking list, I had UGA over USC. Well, I did the power rankings a couple weeks ago. But now with these recent developments, what's your take on Julian Lewis? In UGA, I, I mean, I just don't feel like it's as much of a shoe in as I felt it was maybe three, four weeks ago for the dogs to go flip him. Well, back when he reclassified to the 2025 class, he almost also reopened his recruitment yeah. at the same time. But I think that with USC, even in that moment, him and his family already started to get a little bit of FOMO. When you start thinking about USC and Lincoln Riley and the track record at the position of not only having a first round pick regularly, but the number one pick, the Heisman Trophy winner, if you start for Lincoln Riley at the position, it's almost a guarantee that those two things are gonna happen for you. So if it's not me, Julian Juju Lewis, 
under center for USC. It's going to be somebody else attaining those things that I've worked so hard for. He was just back out at USC. He got a chance to go shopping, go to the beach, really feel what it would be like to live in LA. Certainly got mm-hmm. back around Lincoln Riley. And he said there's no coach in college football that loves the game as much as him. And he pointed to Lincoln Riley being the head coach, being the offensive coordinator, and being the quarterback's coach. He saluted him for that and said this is how much he pours into those jobs on his staff. How could anyone love coaching as much as Lincoln Riley? So he really respects that, had a great time out there, likes the way that USC's recruiting, likes the way USC's hitting the portal. They really think that USC can win the national championship by the time he gets out there. So I think USC has has, uh, really done a good job of hanging on in this recruitment and talking to some people that spent time with Julian Lewis at USC. This is the best that they've felt about that recruitment in quite some time. But you and I and everybody know that until the ink dries, anything can happen. And Colorado mentioned for us uh, the spring game. Again, that would be his third time on campus this calendar year. He's really enjoyed talking football with Coach Shermer. When they were out there a couple weeks ago, they thought the offense looked great at the spring practice that they attended. And certainly the platform that you can get playing for Deion Sanders in Colorado is also exciting. And then, of course, Georgia, of course, Auburn, of course, Alabama. Those three schools are in the mix as well. So uh, Julian Lewis setting up official visits, and those will be important in his process. Mm. All right, so Julian Lewis is the number two rated quarterback. Obviously, Bryce Underwood, number one. Number three is George McIntyre. Number four is Deuce Knight. Number five is Matt Zollers. And then we get to number six. He's the highest rated uncommitted QB in the country, and that's Houston Longstreet out of California. And this weekend, he was on the move. Auburn, Oregon, Ole Miss visits. Um, he's going to make a decision pretty soon. I know Texas A&M is in the mix as well, but how do you see this Houston Longstreet uh, recruitment shaping up? Hey, a little bonus nugget before we get in the Longstreet. Alabama still trying to recruit Deuce Knight, uh, Notre Dame commit alongside Jillian Lewis. So they're trying to get the spatula out on a couple quarterbacks, Kalen DeBoer and that new staff. But Hussan Longstreet, we're talking Iron Bowl, Uh, caliber quarterbacks Mm -hmm. he was at auburn this weekend what a busy nine days or so for the corona centennial standout was at texas a&m last weekend i think a&m was the leader going into that visit and coming out of that visit uh but went to ole miss then went to oregon then went to auburn for a day auburn spring game and auburn has given this young man a lot to think about it was his second time on campus this year the first time he was there he got a chance to see a spring practice loved the way hugh freeze and and his staff ran practice and now they got a chance to get back as many times as i said i'm excited to be here at the top of this clip they said the word amazing to describe this Mm -hmm. auburn visit everything was amazing from time spent with hugh freeze and company to the fans to just the atmosphere on campus to getting around the players and kind of similar to what they said about Texas A&M and a quarterback stepping in. They think that this Auburn roster is perfectly setting up with the way they've recruited receiver and some of these other positions for him to step in and, and, and be the trigger man and, and be the guy to get it going. So uh, Texas A&M, the leader coming into this Auburn visit, his father, Kevin, told me that he's going to take tonight and tomorrow to try and figure this thing out. He's got a decision date next Sunday. Right. You and I have heard a lot of times where, hey, we're going to take these next two days, decide and sit on it. Well, it's going to be hard because these coaches are going to keep, keep it doesn't stop. Uh, trying to converse, keep recruiting you till you tell them one way or the other. And these guys didn't get these corner office jobs uh, uh, for by accident. They're very yeah, convincing They didn't get them guys. by being lazy. Right. They're eloquent in their message. So, look, a- A&M, they had Keelan Russell on campus this weekend. SMU commits. So if it goes sideways with Hussan Longstreet, Keelan Russell, the in-state state champion quarterback from Duncanville, uh, they obviously have him on the radar. But Auburn, uh, they seem to have a lot of late momentum here. Is it enough to overtake A&M? We'll know next Sunday, Josh. Yeah. Well, looking at, I'm looking at the recruiting prediction machine right now for Longstreet, and it shows, and I want to see if you agree with this, Texas A&M at 97.3% and Auburn at 1.4%. Do you agree with that or do you think it's a little closer? Well, I think we can all agree that it's closer. I have it. I had an A&M pick at my old place of employment. 
Uh, not logged a new pick at, on three, so excited to hopefully do that this coming week. Uh, but A&M, Auburn, neither would surprise me. Really liked A&M uh, early last week, uh, or excuse me, late the week before this past week in Auburn, just seeing that spring practice on his last visit, then coming back on this visit. And he's an Under Armour athlete too. He was in that commercial with the Super Bowl a few years ago with Tom Brady, the Under Armour next athletes. And just having even that a little wrinkle with Auburn is something that's helping the, helping the Tigers, but A&M all in on Hassan Longstreet as well. Mm. All right, before we get out of QB dominoes, I want to circle back to Ryan Montgomery because he was in Gainesville this weekend. He's the number 15 quarterback in the country, number 197 overall. And for much of this, well, for much of the last, well, six to eight months, I would say it's UF in South Carolina. UF or South Carolina. Ryan Montgomery just visiting those two schools. He's mixing a couple more. UGA is one of them. So now that UGA is missed on Matt Zollers, should the Gators and the Gamecocks be a little leery of the dogs getting heavily involved for Ryan Montgomery? Well, certainly Georgia could, like we talked about at the top, ratchet this thing up for Ryan Montgomery. And sometimes it's not when you get the ticket for the ride, if that ride is right for you, and if they view Georgia as the best situation for him to develop in the quarterback he wants to develop into, he could certainly be a bulldog. And I think that's the way Ryan Montgomery and company are looking at it. Mm -hmm. And even though we may have said, hey, this is Georgia's top target, this is Georgia's number two target, and this is Georgia's number three target, Mike Bobo has recruited the hell out of this kid. He's been in regular contact with him. He's built a great relationship with Montgomery Van Gorder as well, and he's been to Athens several times and really likes it. Now, with all that being said, I think South Carolina has led the majority of this recruitment, yeah. but Florida has always been an interesting option for him. And I think part of the reason why Florida is wasn't, for most of the case, on the same level as South Carolina is there's been a little bit of nervousness about the trajectory of the Florida program with the schedule that they have this year um, and some of the tough games that they had last year. But from just a pure coaching staff perspective, this young man loves Billy Napier and he loves Coach O'Hara, always loves being around there, just loves the vibe and culture around the Florida program that Coach Napier and his staff have put in place. And he just had a great visit where he spent a lot of time with Graham Mertz, really enjoyed that, got into the intricate details. You're visited with the with the team pastor just got more time with players on the team and florida gave him a lot to think about he's going to visit south carolina for mm -hmm. the gamecock spring game and then he's going to try and make a decision which will make things very interesting again if let's say julian lewis isn't ready to decide we we talked about it we think julian lewis is going to take his official visits before committing but i think they have conversations do we need to take those he's been on right. so many trips what if Ryan Montgomery's timeline is earlier than Julian Lewis's? And he says, look, I want to come to Georgia. Does Georgia say, all right, we'll take two or no, you can't. Or yes, you're coming and we're done with one. So it's all fascinating stuff right now. Yeah. And guys, let me know. Comment section below. These QB dominoes are dropping. Where do you think some of these uncommitted prospects are going to land? Let me know. Comment section below. All right. Let's head over to Texas. They had a weekend. <laughs> A couple five stars on campus. Now, you can go to Inside Texas. Justin Wells and the boys do an incredible job of covering all things Longhorns over there. They have a ton of stuff. But with Steve, I want to talk about two big-name five stars that were in, on campus. And we'll start with the number one linebacker in America, Jonah Williams. And prior to this visit, he was trending on the recruiting prediction machine to Oklahoma. But he was at Texas this weekend. He has Ohio State next weekend. And OU has a big lead over OSU on the RPM. But, Steve, do you see this race tightening a little bit? Well, I think. The more visits Jonah Williams takes, the murkier and cloudier this recruitment gets. Mm -hmm. And he had a fantastic visit in Austin. He told me the coaching staff is great. And he said they check all the boxes for what he wants in a college. He says, hopefully he'll make it back up there. So, you know, Texas putting their best foot forward in, a, in this recruitment. Earlier in the spring, it definitely looked like Oklahoma had a commanding lead, but he also visited LSU, had a great visit there. We've seen Ohio State make up fast ground with prospects 
this cycle if they don't already lead when these young men come to campus. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of visit Jonah Williams has. And I know he's our number one ranked linebacker, but he could be our number one ranked yeah. safety. He's Rover. He is just a difference maker in that back seven, can do a lot of things. Kalik Lockett, five-star receiver, mm -hmm. also visited Texas this weekend, Josh. And talking to him, talking to his dad, it was a visit that blew that family away. They're coming back for an official visit in June. LSU, Texas A&M, Florida State, USC, yeah. some of the other contenders for Kalik Lockett. But talking to him and his dad today, there's no doubt that spending time with Coach Sarkeesian, getting that one-on-one -on -one time with him, the way he can script wide receivers open, uh, just the track record of receiver development from Coach Sark's time at Alabama with guys like Devontae Smith winning the Heisman Trophy. Just the, how open Devontae Smith would look on Saturdays because of the scheme. And then certainly uh, Xavier Worthing, what he's already been able to do at Texas. The, that all speaks volumes. And his dad was like, look, Texas is going to get a lot of these guys just because of the atmosphere that they created and how comfortable players felt on campus. Josh, our guy, Eric Nalen, colleague, he predicted DeCorian Moore to Texas on the RPM, five-star receiver, number one in the country at his position. I could see it, man. He's committed to LSU, but Texas and Oregon have been given the uh, the Bayou Bengals hell in that one. And he's uh, our guys at Inside Texas reporting that DeCorian Moore expe expected back again in the near future. But he's been a regular two weeks in a row, been on campus. Yeah. Uh, at, at Texas. So they're in the middle of that one. Jamie French and Jordan Davidson are guys that I have RPM to Ohio State. No one's told me those are wrong right now, but uh, those guys certainly uh, spoke highly of Texas and, and their visits this weekend as well. Jordan Davidson at one point was a Texas lean. I, Ohio State uh, certainly in great position coming in. Did Texas do something to slow down the Buckeyes' momentum with those guys? I'm interested in seeing how that dust settles we know Texas is going to have a great class regardless. Number six in the country last year. They're in the top 10 this year with so many blue chippers on the board. Yeah, and, you know, last year was a little curious because last year the number two wide receiver, Micah Hudson, uh, he didn't give Texas really the time of day throughout his recruitment committing to Texas Tech. Uh, Texas goes on to land their elite wide receiver in Ryan Wingo, but it seems like Kalik Lockett, though, is much more viable this year for Texas to actually land him. Would you say so? Well, with Micah Hudson, Texas Tech just did a phenomenal job of getting in there so early. Coach McGuire, Coach Blanchard, and that coaching staff, their inroads in the Lone Star State are second to none. I mean, so uh, he was just ingrained with that staff, loved yeah. what they were building, sees an opportunity for himself to be king of the castle there. And, and, and so that was a big pickup and an uphill battle for everybody. There is no leader for, for Lockett that's uh, – overwhelming one way True. or the other certainly he's human so maybe on some days he likes one and then on another day he <laughs> likes another uh, so the fluidity of that uh texas is in the middle of that one and we'll see how this recruitment continues to yep. ebb and flow but he had a just an absolute fantastic experience sarkeesian and company again just the one-on-one -on -one time and, and and it's not just not just like all right, I'm spending 30 minutes with Lockett. I'm spending 30 minutes with Jonah Williams. I'm spending 30 minutes with DeCorian Moore. It's just the how at ease he makes these young men feel with the opportunity and with him at Texas and that coaching staff, just the job they do to make guys feel comfortable. Certainly they're winning. You know, they got a chance to win the national championship this coming year. They're getting players drafted at a high rate. They've been recruiting top five caliber classes a couple years in a row. You could say they were even a year early this past year, they're on time now, and they're going to be good for, for for years to come. If that defense continues to come along and recruit at the level uh, that I think they have been, uh, but Kalik Lockett uh, and any receiver, DeCorian Moore, Jamie French, uh, you know, certainly you can point to Ohio State and Brian Hartline and, and, and Jamarcus Shepard at Alabama, what he did at Washington. And then even, hey, Coach Peeler at Missouri, that is another beast receivers coach right there. Those are probably the the three that I think of because Coach Peeler had A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. Now he's got Luther Burden over there at Mizzou. Yeah. Uh, so easy to see why Texas is in a great spot with this with, with Kalik Lock and these other receivers, but it's not just because of the production on the field. It's because the coaching staff is so likable. Mm. 
All right. Speaking of likable coaching staffs, let's head over to Boulder. There were recruits in Boulder, high school recruits. We haven't talked much high school recruiting when it comes to Coach Prime and the Buffaloes, but now we can. There was two big names that I saw. Zaire Addison, a top 200 prospect out of the Tampa Bay area, the number 17 offensive tackle in America, and also quarterback TJ Latif, the number 24 QBs, top 300, and there's only six QBs in the top 25 that are uncommitted. So TJ Latif is actually a major domino. Uh, what are you hearing on these guys and just the weekend out there in Boulder with Coach Prime? Well, there's going to be quarterback drama, but right now there's six uncommitted guys, and we'll see how it plays out moving forward. But mm -hmm. Colorado did a great job with both these guys. Talked to both young men, yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Addison. You know, he talked about how Coach Prime's vision for the program uh, and himself uh, to get them to the next level really stood out. And, and he thought that, you know, Coach Phil Lodeholt, who's from the Bill Biedenbaugh coaching tree, who's one of the best offensive line coaches in the country over there at Oklahoma. He really liked having Coach Phil Lodeholt there. He said that was a big deal for him and loved his approach for the game. And then he gave some love to off-field recruiter Devin Rispris, who's an old coach in Florida, Josh, old high school coach. But he said Colorado feels like home. Now, I thought Florida State has is kind of the, the leader right now, but this is a young man that's taking a lot of visits. Just had a great visit to Miami this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, had, had a good visit up to Penn State. Had a West Coast swing that also included Oregon, USC, UCLA, and Stanford. So this is a young man that's well-traveled. Florida State, one that I thought set the bar, but Colorado in the thick of that one to get them back to campus. And then TJ Latif, you know, Nebraska perceived favorite for him right. going to Nebraska spring game for his official. But he said Colorado uh, has changed his perspective in a big way, said it was a special place, certainly likes what he's seen for Shadur Sanders, uh, uh, Coach Shermer in, in that offense. Uh, you know, kids are excited about it when they talk yeah. to him about he's Coach Shermer is talking to these kids about his offense and, you know, they're vibing with him and, and, and feeling it. And TJ Latif, you know, maybe we slow down, pump the brakes just a little on on, on Nebraska. He said that this Colorado visit uh, changed changed things, changed his perspective, and he's excited to see what the future brings for him with that recruitment. Okay, yeah, hey, these quarterbacks they got to go somewhere, and Colorado has a major need. And a quarterback like a, a TJ Latif, somebody in the top twenty-five, could he could be the piece that gets that high school recruiting going, especially landing a quarterback kind of setting the foundation for the 2025 class. Um, what's your feeling just in general about Colorado recruiting at the high school level? I've been, you know, a little, I don't know if the right word's disappointed, but I thought Coach Prime would do more than just kind of pick off a couple elite players, like a, like a Jordan Seaton, but I thought he might bring in a whole class of Jordan Seatons, not just one here, one there. Uh, is it going to improve out there in Boulder this cycle? Well, it just hasn't been a point of emphasis for them. Yeah. It's obvious that the transfer portal is the main thing for them in the main deal. And that's where they do a lot of their work. Do I think that they could be more exciting on the high school trail if that's the route they chose? Hell yeah. I think they could. If Deion Sanders was in high schools, it would be phenomenal. Kids mm -hmm. would love it. He is as charismatic a person in college football as we've seen in quite some time. And look, Nick Saban, when he retired, I got a chance to talk to some of his former players like Ryan Kelly, and they just talked about what it was like when Saban came into the high school and just mm -hmm. the excitement and just how much different that felt than even some of the other mainstream names in college football at the time. If Deion Sanders went into 20 high schools, did some in-home visits, I think that that would tremendously move the needle for Colorado, for high school guys, if that's the route that they chose to go. Now, certainly they want to win right away. And so they viewed the transfer portal as the recipe for that. But I right. think that holistically to win long term, to win year in and year mm -hmm. out, the foundation of your program has to be high school recruiting and then player development from 18 to 22. And you use the transfer portal as a place to – uh, certainly land a no-brainer because we're seeing some no-brainers going in the portal now. But to, to to add depth to a room that maybe you lost some guys to the NFL draft or injury or just didn't recruit well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to see if their philosophy changes on the trail. 
But if Deion Sanders and his coaching staff wanted to attack high school recruiting, they would land more blue chippers than the Jordan Seatons and the Cormanis and 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 the you know Donovans and the guys that they've they've been able to to land to date. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's able to go into Michigan, land a Brandon Davis Swain, go into Georgia, land a Cam Michael, go to IMG, land a Jordan Seaton. But you just like to see it a little bit more consistently. So we're going to continue to co- talk Colorado recruiting as the spring. But it's not there. It's not there. It's not what they want to do, Josh. So we could sit here and t- talk about their potential. It's more, are we evaluating their recipe? Because we certainly know they would do better high school recruiting if they chose to go that right. route. But that's not the route that they're going. Yeah, well, I'm still waiting for them to kind of flip the switch and turn it on because, like you said, we both know Coach Prime is able to do it. Just is he willing to do it at the high school level, and is that their plan? We'll see. Um, We're going to talk a little Missouri now. Matt Zollers, the number five quarterback, just committed. That was the big QB domino that we talked about at the top. Uh, Mizzou, though, they are making some noise. Is this the last we hear of the Tigers, or is there more to come? This is a fun program to follow right now. They finish in the top 10. They beat Ohio State in a New Year's Six game. Um, one of the more exciting football teams in the country. Their head coach is fun. They went out for Matt Zollers, a legit, just straight up legit recruiting win, man. Mm-hmm. There, this was not an NIL deal or what this was an right. early relationship. First to offer, come to campus a couple times, get around our staff, get around our players, old fashioned recruiting win. Certainly Matt Zollers is getting some NIL money, but it wasn't like, hey, let me get 10 grand more here. Let me get 20 grand more. No, this young man made a decision based on relationships, offense, place where he can succeed. And he sees something special in his opinion going on at Missouri. Coach Drinkwitz and company got it done. They got him in the fold. Look, they got a chance to sign one of the top offensive line classes in the country, Josh. Now it might be hard to sign five-star Michael Fasusi from Texas, but they're on a short list. They're going to get an official visit the first weekend of June as they battle some of the heavyweight programs in the country. Andrew Babalola is another Mm five-star from the state of Kansas that has Missouri on his short list. So uh, those guys really excited about Coach Jones, their offensive line coach. And then Jack Lange is the uh, uh, one of the top players in the state from Eureka High School. I think that you look at Michigan, you look at Nebraska, and you look at Missouri. Those are the three schools that I'm looking at most for him. And then this is a chance to have an, a, another fantastic receiver class two in-state guys that they're certainly at the top or near the top four. Isaiah Mosey, I think they're in the top two with Oregon for him. Nebraska, Ole Miss, some of the others trying to make a move for Mosey. Corey Sims dropped his top 12 or whatever. Missouri certainly closer to the top for him. They were the first school to offer uh, uh, Corey Sims, so they're on his shortlist. Javen Boggs is a former Ohio State commit from Cocoa, Florida. Uh, that um, Him and Matt Zollers are already buds, and, and uh, so Missouri's going to have a really good chance to land him and then Jamarian Morrow is like kind of like this gadget player out of Tennessee in the backfield in the slot whatever you want to do he really talked about coach Peeler and the relationship that they have and again I want to say it one more time you you hear about coach Brian Hartline yep. you hear about coach Jamarcus Shepard mm-hmm. but coach Peeler at Missouri is one of the best receiver coaches in the country Coach J.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, now Luther Burden is an absolute star. He's got some guys that he can point to and say, I can make you who you want to be. And so uh, Missouri, they got a chance to sign a terrific offensive line class, one of the best receiver classes in the nation. They're in on the right guys. Now they got to close them. They're in heavyweight battles, but they were a top 10 program in the country last year. They play in the SEC. They got a lot of support from their administration and their foundations and all of that. Uh, I call it infrastructure. They got great infrastructure, Josh. So we'll see what happens with Missouri moving forward. All right. What a uh, very informative segment here with Steve Wiltfong of On3. I'm I'm really glad we can call each other coworkers once again, Steve. Josh, one of the big reasons why I came back to On3 or came to On3 was to reunite back with people like you. Yeah. And uh, what we've worked together since 2010, I believe. So we almost 15 years, me and Steve Wiltfong running the, uh, the give and go. So Steve, appreciate you coming by today on the inside scoop. We're going to talk to you a whole lot more this off season. Hit that like button y'all.
Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel. And also do me a favor, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.